Greetings, and welcome to episode 44. In today's episode, we'll be discussing waking up and what that means for everything in the world. It'll be wonderful if we can all get to a certain level of wakefulness. I would also like to mention, uh, about two videos ago, I was berated as being a Satanist, or should I say, accused of being a Satanist for wearing this shirt. So, the day before laundry day, I decided to wear the shirt again, because, as we all know, being spiritual and in touch with whatever God we worship, I say that to be difficult. <laughs> has nothing to do with what you're wearing and everything to do with how you actually live but yes I was accused of being a Satanist for wearing this shirt and no other reason everything about me screams racist screams uh, Satanist and someone pointed out to me that wow I bet he's just racist and used your shirt instead of the color of your skin and I was like you know what that sounds pretty accurate but that's besides the point and way off topic so <laughs> if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, waking up. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that you've had a good night's sleep when you're waking up and you're getting ready for work and you go off and, and you start the part of your day that helps pay for your life waking up is the thing it's one of those things you gain in life that you can't pay for you it's it can only be achieved through your work through a process that a person who wishes to be awake or in a sufficient state of wakefulness will endeavor to find out how to become wakeful <laughs> to any degree and what wakeful or being awake means is you are aware of the world around you and not just in the five sense materialistic view of that statement I am aware that I am not the only person on the planet and then I can take that a step further I am aware that humans are not the only species on the planet I am aware that having opposable thumbs doesn't mean we get the only say-so on this planet. I am aware that we are all connected. And even if you don't buy into the, oh, we're all one soul and one mind, even if you don't buy into that, we are still connected. You will still see synchronicity. The reason why we are all connected is because we all live on this planet. We have a common thread just in that. So in that alone, we are all connected. We live on this planet that from its core out emits a specific frequency and then you get out to the mag magnetosphere we are all connected by this common radio frequency we are all connected even if you choose to see it in a materialistic view we are all connected <laughs> that's not even getting into the spirit now when you become more wakeful that is to say more aware you will start to see the inner connectivity I would say that the frequency 
that we all inhabit would be the outward materialistic uh, manifestation of the same connection we all share in here. And we all share this connection whether or not we like it. Becoming more aware has the side effect of causing people to be less outwardly materialistic. Not saying that it goes away overnight altogether. No. The more aware of who you really are and how life really works, the less materialistic you become because you have something else to focus on. Even if you only focus on it for a little while, it's it, it, you're putting less energy into being materialistic. And it has another side effect. It makes a person more curious toward... Ooh, excuse me. Toward becoming more aware and more awake which is a good thing now being awake also has negative side effects everything there's no everything has a dual nature there's no getting away from it if you see more beauty if you if you become more aware of of the beauty around you you're going to likewise be more aware of the suffering around you <clears throat> that is not to say that that suffering wasn't already there, you're just now aware of it. You will also become more aware of the fact that your suffering, your suffering, most of it is your fault. <laughs> I think that is the part of awareness that is the hardest part to get around, is when you become aware of your hand in most of your undoing. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean like, oh, 30% of it. No, we're talking 75 to 80% of the hardships you've suffered through your life. You created that. <laughs> Either directly or indirectly, but most often directly. Because you had a blatant disregard for anything other than the instant gratification of the moment and that doesn't mean that whatever you're doing is necessarily pleasurable you could have been chasing uh, a new man woman money uh, things whatever you were chasing was external so you weren't paying attention to the ramifications of your actions which you can only discern if you take a chance to look inside a little bit of introspection can uh, pretty much put an end to your personally caused suffering. Now, sometimes we have to make choices that aren't very good. Where there is no better choice you had, you just, you're stuck with a, a shitty choice and a less shitty choice. <laughs> In those instances, technically, it's not our doing, but if we look back and trace back our decisions, we'll probably find where we made the decision that ended us up at this decision where our choices are shitty and less shitty as opposed to good and bad. <laughs> <coughs> but everything seems to be ramping up. If you look in the news lately, there's a lot more violence, a lot more protest, a lot more uh, everything. And if, you, if you're actually following it and you're watching the news, you can see that a lot of these people are sleepwalking through it. Group think, I'm doing it because they're doing it. And they're not saying that, but you can see it. These people are seeing one side of an issue when if you take the time to just sit and think about it there's so many sides to this issue 
and it can be dealt with and taken care of, but everybody's focusing on one aspect. One aspect, and that one aspect pretty much invalidates everybody else's claim, and that aspect everyone is focusing on is race. And if these people would become more aware of the situation and be less exclusive and realize that they are not the only ones suffering in this instance, the problem would take care of itself. Well, maybe not that easily, but it would go a long way toward the problem being resolved. Just raising one's own awareness. And that's not to say one's intellect. I'm not telling you, we'll go back to school and study. No, this is just becoming more aware of the world around you. That it's not just you. It's not just your race. It's not just our species. People want to say, oh, there's, there's UFOs and they're going to come and they're going to rescue us. Why would they come here? You're not secure in your own skin. You're not secure in your own race. You're not secure in your own species. Why would they come here? Huh? Really? <laughs> and, and, and knowing they're already here, why would they show themselves? And more than just a, whew, I lost the cloud cover. Whew, and there I go. <laughs> I didn't mean for you to see that. <laughs> why would they do any more than that? If you're not even secure within your own skin, you can't even tell yourself you like you because you lack the awareness to realize that you have been running on autopilot via your ego for years and that you can fix that. If you can't see that, the reason you don't like you is that you don't like your ego and that part that you put out here, you don't like that. But you have never gave yourself a chance. If you don't, if you don't understand that, then you lack even the most basic awareness because awareness starts with the self being aware that you're not being the genuine version of you which when you project through that ego onto everybody else because they what you project out is what you're gonna see and if you have a very limited awareness of none at all you're only gonna see what your ego tells you is there and your ego is gonna say things that are untrue that help maintain itself the ego runs on its own energy and is a completely separate version of you it's the part of you you wish you were But falsely, it is that falsely. To be that person in real time, you would have to get a basic understanding of yourself. To understand that if you can spend years pretending to be cool, pretending to be funny, pretending to be confident, then maybe, just maybe, you really are cool, funny, and confident. Basic awareness. I mean, you just, there's no light between my fingers. Basic awareness. Not a huge stretch. But that basic awareness takes a lot of self-honesty to achieve that. Being honest with yourself that you have this ego out in front in the first place. We learn this in school. When we're in school, you pick someone you want to be like and then you pretend to be them. And after a while, it runs on autopilot. So we completely forget that it's running. And a little side note for you. When a person has a midlife crisis, it's because that ego begins to fail. Or you begin to question that ego with questions like, well, who am I? These are the questions you should have been asking when you were a teenager instead of telling everybody, I am. You should have been saying to yourself, 
Who am I? Because when that ego fails and you've been using it as your crutch and defense mechanism for 20 or 30 years, yeah, when that ego fails you or you begin to fail it by questioning its existence, yeah, you're left with no persona. You start to realize that your ego is a false self. You start to question your who your friends really are because your friends, they fell in love with that ego. They never really got to know you, but that's your fault because you told them that, yeah, that ego, that, that's me. That's what you told them. So you sold them a bill of goods as much as they sold you a bill of goods. No one to blame but yourself unless you took the time to get even a basic understanding of you. I couldn't figure it out my whole life. Why people act different around certain people. Because the ego adapts to your different cliques. Everybody's got their main clique, but then you've got your little side cliques. You know, you got your favorite people, and then you got your secondaries and tertiaries and blah, blah, blah. Everybody's got it. I used to have it. I don't anymore just because I keep my circle super duper small. It stays off drama, and it gives me less reason to develop an ego, a false persona of myself. I know who I am, where I've been. I don't need a group of people reminding me. And I don't need to be anyone different than who I am to impress somebody. If I can't impress you with what's at the core, I certainly don't want to make up a false caricature of myself and have you fall in love with that. Oh, he's so funny. What if I'm not really all that funny? My ego is. Point of fact, I am kind of really super funny, but that's not the point. <laughs> like this back before I got in touch with myself and got my basic level of wakefulness yeah, my ego talked me into smoking <laughs> bastard <laughs> got rid of the ego but I still smoke that motherfucker did me in and what's funny is people don't realize drug problems drug problems of any sort be it alcohol uh, meth, heroin these things are ego fuel and part of the reason why you people can't kick these habits is because your ego is a trigger for that habit and if you don't get rid of the ego it's going to constantly trigger that habit likewise using whatever your favorite substance is or was can trigger the ego to pop back up. Are oh, you doing that stuff again? You need me. Boom. <laughs> or vice versa. Yeah, we need some of that stuff because that helps me be a better you. <laughs> and the ego comes from fear in the first place. Fear that I won't be accepted unless I'm a little bit funnier, a little bit more confident, a little bit more whatever. And yes, and I hate to say it, and this is more true with your level of awareness. The lower your level of awareness, the less wakeful you are, the more beneficial your ego is. The more wakeful or aware you are, the less beneficial your ego is. You start to see that, you think, wow, that ego detracts from me. Because I'm allowing others to determine who I am, to dictate my actions according to what they would like to see in me or me do. They want to see, because well, what they want to see is more of themselves in you. Partially because misery loves company, and partially because that's how we connect. We want to see ourselves in, the, in that person. 
So we project ourselves onto that person. So we, in a small part, help a person to develop an ego in the first place by telling them, I like to see, I want to see this in you. And so you say, okay, poof, it's in me now. Even if before it was not. But your ego won't let that on. No, no, your ego will will won't say I've been doing this for years but it'll come across as though this is just who I am and I've always been this way I'm cool <laughs> I honestly I couldn't even tell I couldn't begin to tell you what it would take for you to dispel your ego other than waking up even the tiniest bit and seeing that your ego is not only running your life but is ruining important parts of your life because it's not when the guy wants to run out around with his friends it's not him that wants to run around with his friends it's his image that wants to run around so yeah I got an image to uphold that image is the ego that ego is what wants to run around with the friends. The heart wants to stay home with the girl. Same thing with the girl. The image wants to go out and hang out. The heart wants to kick it with her man. And uh, you run into problems when you let the ego take you outside and run around with your friends. If you actually take the time to discover which one of these little voices in here and in here is actually you you can start to tear down the ego and you'll start to see that maybe it's not so important to be seen as cool but to be liked for who I am why people walk around all day long and their whole life long feeling unloved is because they are they are unloved. People love the image you project out into the world. That image you project out into the world isn't you. So you walk around unloved while your ego gets all of the glory. When you wake up just a tiniest bit and realize that, Suddenly that ego isn't enough. To be adored for something you're not isn't enough. When you fully become fully awake, which I can't even tell you what that feels like because I can't tell you if I'm fully awake. There's no one to gauge it. I can just tell you I'm aware enough to know that I no longer have an ego because my ego no longer serves me and it hasn't served me in years. I can actually tell when someone's projecting onto me what they would like to see in me and I push it out like hey I'm right here if this isn't the guy you want to hang out with call one of your other friends it's just that simple nobody's friendship or love is that important that I need to pretend to be someone I'm not well what if that ego makes you a better person your ego can't possibly make you a better person because an ego is not a person and like I said, if you can pretend to be this great individual, perhaps you just really are that great individual. Did that ever... <laughs> Did that ever come to mind at all, ever? Did that ever cross your mind? That if I can spend 30 or 40 years, 5 or 10 years, 2 or 3 years pretending to be this awesome individual, isn't it perfectly possible that you really are this awesome individual? So no, the ego is not beneficial because outwardly you're an awesome individual while in here you don't feel like the awesome individual because on a subconscious level you know that that false ego isn't you. But you won't wake up even the tiniest bit to correct the problem. Better to stay asleep. But it's not. Shall I show you what we've done to ourselves and this planet while we were sleeping? 
So I make a video montage of just all of the damage we've done to ourselves as a species and what we've done to the planet while we were sleeping and letting our egos run amok. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Who, who gives a shit? That's what chases money, the ego. That's what chases notoriety, the ego. That's what doesn't care about the next person, next species, next being, is the ego. Sleeping people can't steer a ship. And the ego doesn't care where the ship goes as long as he gets what he wants. Another dollar. Another accolade. Another fine woman. Another fine man. Some kind of notch to put on that belt. Well, they like me. They don't like you. They like your ego. You never gave them a chance to like you. Because you are fast asleep. Because the prospect of being awake and part of this, an active participant in your life, terrifies you. And you learn that back in school. So now you seek out people like me, because I'm not the only one out here, telling this stuff to you. So you spend a little bit of time seeking out someone like me that will point this out to you. And I don't like that spiritual mumbo jumbo right, mumbo jumbo something's broken and I bet you that's how to fix it become sufficiently aware of yourself and then you will become sufficiently aware of the fact that you are not sufficiently aware <laughs> Because those of us that are sufficiently aware understand that we're not sufficiently aware. Even with what others would call an advanced state of awareness, we're still not. I've, I'm still not sufficiently aware. A lot of things fall under the radar for me, but not within my immediate sphere. We're talking about out further. But awareness is infinite. And I'm still, what, a teenager? You say, if you can gauge by uh, mental maturity, emotional maturity, physical maturity, well, then there's also an, a, 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 a maturity of your wakefulness. There is a, a maturity level for your awareness. And I would st say I'm, I am now where I should have been when I was 18. So that's to say that I am sufficiently aware. I'm sufficiently aware for an 18-year-old. And what's sad is it took years of hard work to get to this point. Had I been taught from birth to wake up and stay awake, I would have the wakefulness, the awareness of a 40-year-old right now. Could you imagine if I'm this aware at 40 and I only have the awareness of an 18-year-old? Had I been taught it my whole life, by the time I hit the age of 18, I would be where I'm at now? Good God, youth really is wasted on the young. So that means when I'm here, I can't even fathom having a 40-year-old awareness. Just considering all of the hard work and years of practice it took to get here. Imagine if we taught it right. Which means from birth. Don't develop an ego. But that's what we teach them. You got to pretend to be someone else because you're not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
being aware and being awake you have to come to terms with the fact that not only are you good enough but you've always been good enough and that involves a fair amount of pity party and my god I've wasted my life <laughs> I had my pity party oh man and I still sometimes to this day will look back and just lament all of the time I wasted and that's not to say that I wasted time on, on my spiritual path that's to say we deviate from the path all of us and in those deviations sometimes I would deviate for months sometimes years imagine if I could get that time back my awareness maybe I'd have the awareness of a 19 year old but I cannot fathom from the point I'm at right now having the uh, awareness of a 40 year old I can't imagine seeing beyond my solar system okay that's a lie I can imagine seeing to the outskirts of probably our galaxy but that is not the point the point is if seeing to the outskirts being aware from where I'm at here to the outskirts of our galaxy if that's an 18 year old awareness could you imagine where I would be with a 40 year old awareness all of us every one of us playing catch-up and you're not even aware you're playing catch-up even if you're awake you're not aware that you're playing catch-up until one day you become aware that you're playing catch-up for all the years that you strolled around with your good buddy the ego for all the years that even after you were aware didn't do anything about it because it was safer just to have your good buddy out front yes <laughs> safer to travel in pairs yeah but you're it's still it's just yeah never mind <laughs> just go on and do <laughs> in this instance it is not safer to travel in pairs you don't want your ego out in front because everything your ego learned you learned it too and you learned it wrong because your ego only learned how to keep itself alive for its benefit yes it is a, a system that runs on its own for its own benefit it benefits you very little because at the end of the day you didn't accomplish anything your ego did if you wear ego because you're not confident you're confident. Your ego tricked you into thinking you weren't confident. If you wear your ego through the day because you carry this weight or depression or sadness around and your ego is a happy-go-lucky, you're happy-go-lucky. Your ego tricked you into thinking you weren't. Self-preservation. Because after a while, your ego becomes a thought form and thought forms function independently of their human source <coughs> and like the human are very keen on self-preservation and will talk you into doing whatever it takes to maintain it and to bolster it it'll convince you that you're not enough you need me <sighs> what is it I think uh, faith no more wrote a song called midlife crisis it explains it beautifully sense of security my pockets jingling <laughs> your blood was that your blood begins it's true but without me you're only you <laughs> I almost sang it you almost got a treat there <laughs> dogs howling <laughs> mm, treat <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, your ego will convince you that you're nothing without it. You're, you'd be nothing without me. No, without you, I would have had the time to develop all these skills right here and I'd have them. Because I got rid of my ego and guess what? It took almost no effort to say, wait a minute, if you have it, I have it. Because you, I have to reflect through you to get out there. Which means you picked it up from me. You may have learned it from them, but it's in here or you wouldn't have it. Because I'm your power source. Because a thought form detached from its source will find another energy source. That's all it's going to do. So it has to teach you how to do to feed it. <laughs> the skills are already in you. <laughs> but you didn't see it because you weren't aware of the self. Not the tiny self, the ego, the self. The immortal slice of the creator. Oh, demons, no. A thought form is not a demon. A thought form is something that you create and feed and make powerful. That's why sometimes we can't defeat our ego. Because we give it that much power. First, you got to starve it to death. How do you do that? Stay away from people. <sighs> because you as the source... The, the immediate source of nourishment for your ego, for this thought form. It's, it's not going to be strong enough to do any real damage to you if it's only feeding off of you. To do any real damage to you or the world around you, it has to be able to feed off of others. So if you stayed away from people, you wouldn't starve it out completely, but you would weaken it enough to defeat it. Just food for thought. No pun intended. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, awareness, wakefulness, wake up and be aware that you're not the one in control of the ship. And once you achieve that, tiny little bit of awareness it all starts right there the whole journey toward God and oneness and all that goodness or even just it, achieving balance in your life starts right there from that tiny see no light between my fingers that tiny little bit of awareness that you are good enough and it would have taken very little effort to nurture that in you instead of nurturing this thought form that now controls your life. Wake up. If you need help, get help. You have me, you have many, 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 many other teachers out there. I'm not quite Chang Kane. But I can help you. <laughs> if you get that reference, you're old like me. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, uh, we are well past the 30 minute mark. <coughs> Excuse me. But I really, I'm really getting into this episode, so I might make this the first part of a two part series and a matter of fact I think I just did and uh, yeah because I think more needs to be discussed about this because that basic starting point is probably the most important part of the journey and I probably should have made this video first but it's becoming more prevalent in our society that people are walking around asleep people are waiting for the zombie apocalypse it's been going on for the last 2,000 years. <laughs> Bet you didn't see that one coming, did you? 
but yeah we're gonna go ahead and call it uh, this has now become part one of a two-part series and if you've enjoyed this video please click the like button you can also favorite it if you want don't forget to leave some comments down below that as this is a discussion and I would like to hear from you also but if you would like to keep getting information from me or you just like the sound of my voice go ahead and hit the subscribe button and keep coming back but until next time you hang in there